Let's solve question one. Let's go through A and B in this video and then we'll leave C and D for the next video. So in question one we're solving some derivatives. In part A we have ln of x squared plus x, all of it derivative. Now before we go on, let's write the basic formula of ln x derivative. ln of x derivative equals to 1 over x. Now what do we notice? We don't have just ln of x, we have ln of x squared plus x which means that this whole thing is an expression, is a function of x. So let's just call it, this is an expression. Whenever we have an expression, we have to use the chain rule. So let's give a symbol for our expression. Let's just put a star here. So instead of an x, we have a star. If we differentiate it, we keep the same logic, one over our expression, our star, times our star derivative. And this is where the chain comes in. This is what it means, the chain rule. We differentiate the expression itself, the function of our variable. So how does this apply to our example? If we do ln of x squared plus x derivative, remember this is our star. So let's use this concept in mind. We will have 1 divided by our star, which is x squared plus x, times the derivative of it. So x squared plus x derivative. And that's equal to 1 divided by x squared plus x times, what is x squared plus x derivative? Well, x squared derivative, that's just 2x, and x derivative is 1. So 2x plus 1. And if we write it a bit more neat, that's equal to 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x. Now, the, the thing to keep in mind is the following, that whenever we have something more than x, an expression of x, we have to use this chain rule. And the best way to, to, to understand or to, to study the chain rule, to practice it, is to keep always these formulas as a block. So you take it as a block. We have the basic formula with x, and then we have the chain rule, the formula with our star. Let me give you one more example to understand how to, to, to best under, understand the, the chain rule. Let's say x to the power of n derivative equals to n times x to the power of n minus one. By the same logic, if we have an expression of x, our star to the power of n derivative equals to n times our star to the power of n minus one times the star derivative. So we add the derivative of the expression. And again, this is our block. This is our set of two formulas. And whatever other formulas we have the derivatives, I strongly encourage you to study them together with this chain so that you get used to the fact that whenever we have something more than x, an expression of x, don't forget to take the derivative of that thing as well. All right, so that was part A. Let's go through part B. What do we have there? In part B, so we have x times e to the power of x times ln of x derivative. Now this is the product rule. And when we have a product rule, we have to use the derivative of two terms. But we have three terms over here. So what do we do in this case? We just group together two terms. So let's take the first two term as our a and the second term as our b. So we would have the derivative of the first term, which is x times e to the power x derivative times the second derivative, ln of x, plus the first term regular times the derivative of the second term, ln of x derivative. Okay, what's that equal to? Well, now we can use the basic product rule because x times e to the power of x is two terms, so we can differentiate the two terms. That's x derivative times e to the power of x plus x multiplied with e to the power of x derivative. And that's just the derivative of the first term of this one. Multiplied with ln of x, ln of x plus x times e to the power of x multiplied with the derivative of ln x, which is one over x, one over x. Okay, let's go on. What do we have now? Well, x derivative is one. So we have one times e to the power of x plus x multiplied with e to the power of x derivative is just e to the power of x multiplied with ln x plus 
and here we have x times e to the power of x times 1 over x. x and x cancels out, so we have only plus e to the power of x. Alright, now what do we have as a common term? We can see e to the power of x in many, in, uh, in, in many terms. We see it here, we see it here, and we see it here. So let's write. In this case, we have e to the power of x, and if we open the brackets, we're left with 1 from the first term plus x from here multiplied with ln of x and then plus e to the power of x alright now what can we do next we can open this bracket with ln x so we would have e to the power of x times 1 times ln x is just ln x plus x times ln x well that's x ln of x plus e to the power of x. Okay, now if we go on and we still have e to the power of x here and here, let's take it as a common factor. So we have e to the power of x and in brackets we're left with ln x plus x times ln of x plus 1. And that's it. That's the final answer. We're done in this video. In the next video we go on with C and D.